with a good morning to you both. Jonathan, um, do you think it's possible that all these Democrats who took money from Weinstein didn't know something was going on? Well, it depends how you define something. I mean, I think they knew, and people in Hollywood and in journalism knew that uh, Harvey Weinstein was kind of an ugly character uh, and that he, he had a reputation for being really difficult to deal with. Um, but nobody knew the extent of this. Uh, nobody knew that there were rape allegations. I mean, th this is new stuff. It's easy in these situations to go, oh, everybody knew everything. No, they just knew that he was kind of a bad guy uh, who wasn't pleasant to work for or work with. But nobody knew this. Okay. Uh, rather unsavory, I think, is one way to describe sort of right. his reputation. Um, Clinton went on to talk about these kinds of actions. Let's take a listen. This kind of behavior cannot be tolerated anywhere, whether it's in entertainment, politics. Well, you know, after all, we have someone admitting to being a sexual assaulter in the Oval Office. Want to comment on that, Sophia? I mean, does she have a point? <laughs> Well, you know, I think that Hillary Clinton looked a little bit uncomfortable talking about this, both in this interview and the Fareed Zakaria one that's coming up on CNN. She is in a quandary with this because her husband's been accused of these things. Bill Cosby, uh, Donald Trump, and now Harvey Weinstein. And I think that the issue here, Alex, is she talks about, yes, the behavior's disgusting. Yes, it's shocking and appalling. But for those of us, any woman who's over 40 in this country, you know what it's like to be sexually harassed by a man of power. I don't know if younger women are dealing with this as much. I pray they are not, but I know that I've dealt with it. I suspect you've dealt with it, and other women have been harassed in some form or fashion. So in some ways, I'm not really surprised as someone like Mr. Weinstein that had this type of power and ability to make or break people's careers. That's usually what happens, and women are afraid to talk because we know we will not be believed, and even if we're believed, we'll be blackballed for saying something and be labeled as a troublemaker. That's the problem. Well, let's hope that is changing now. Maybe that's the silver lining of this incident that going forward, no woman is going to have to withstand that anymore. Speak out about it now. Yes. Uh, let's switch gears here, Jonathan, about the president's Obamacare executive order. Does he now own the broken health care system, much like the Washington Post headline says? Absolutely. You know, he put a stick of dynamite in the middle of our health care delivery system. And uh, if you'd done this six months ago, he could have, I guess, gotten away with blaming it on Obama. But for him to do that now, it's just not going to play. And by the way, most of the people hurt by this, we're going to see their premiums surge and, and their coverage deteriorate, are living in red Trump states. So, and it, what he's trying to do is show, hey, I'm doing something. The same way Obama, you know, started with the executive orders. Um, but in exchange for what little credit he'll get for taking some action, he's going to suffer the consequences when this goes badly, as it will. You know, Sophia, Trump supporters are saying these subsidies, they were never lawful because Congress never appropriated the money for them. Of course, the Obama campaign pushed back on that, about the uh, administration pushed back on that. But won't this backfire, to Jonathan's point, on the president if the premiums for his supporters skyrocket? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a catch-22, right, Alex? I'm, I was talking to someone literally before I walked on air this morning who was talking about her premiums going up to $1,000 from, let's say, she was at 700 and she's in a red state. The point is, is that Trump is trying to do something because he's under enormous pressure from his base, right, to deal with Iran, to deal with health care, to deal with North Korea, to deal with et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So he puts himself in a difficult place because because if I live in Virginia, these premiums continue to go up. Virginia is a state that leans now blue and used to be reliably red. It's a state Republicans want to get back in this governor's race coming up in November. All right, guys, Iran now. So, Sophia, what about the president's threat here to quit the Iran nuclear deal and really punting the future of it into the hands of Congress now? What can Congress really do? What do you think is behind the strategy? Well, I think there are a couple problems here. This goes back even to the climate treaty, right? President Trump is undoing President Obama's legacy. I don't want to get into why I think that is 
this particular day, but at the end of the day, he continues to dismantle things on an international level. And if you look at the kickback from Germany, from uh, the Brits, and from others from France mm -hmm. who believe that we should have stayed in and honored that treaty and held Iran's feet to the fire, I think that we're putting ourselves in a difficult situation, Alex, where no one's going to believe us when we say we're going to honor something or do it. I get, on the other hand, that President Trump is trying to, once again, stoke his base and, and cater to his base because he talked about this during the campaign. It's it, just it, where he is. If not, Jonathan, become the dismantler in chief. I mean, talk about that. Healthcare dismantling, Iran deal dismantling, DACA dismantling. I mean, one after the next. It's really pathetic. You know, this is a guy who's supposedly a builder in the private sector. Now all he is is a destroyer. He just wants to take down anything that Barack Obama did. That's no way to govern. We need some continuity in this country, and our allies expect it. Even Vladimir Putin thinks he's wrong on Iran. You know, the only support he has is from Netanyahu, and there are all these reports that everybody in the intelligence community mm. in Israel thinks it's a terrible idea for Israel's security, not to mention the security yeah. of the rest of the world, for them to blow up this Iran deal. All right, Jonathan and Sophie, always good to see you both. Thanks so much. Thank